Hello, welcome to the Cosmic League, episode 13. You know what? We're just going to call this uh, Cats Review. We're going to review the Cats movie. And with me joined is uh, my co-host, Brianne. She is my cat expert. She uh, she believes cats are worth having. Also, your bad movie expert. And a so. bad movie expert. Uh, like me, she enjoys the destruction of humankind on uh, only that cinema <laughs> just anything and terrible TV. in general yeah any kind of like tv <laughs> or movie bad anything human voyeuristic aspects so we just got back it's a little late it's like almost 10 o'clock we just got back from uh our christmas eve showing of cats the movie based on the hit late 90s early 2000 play broadway play broadway play yeah um I thought I was losing my mind the whole movie. Um, <laughs> now, were, we, was, were we watching the same film? Because that was amazing. <laughs> it, it was definitely something. Uh, you know, we what happened was, too, is like, you know, coming out of Star Wars and coming out of, like, the holiday season of uh, anticipated movie releases, Jubanji and all these movies that I'm, like, not bothering to see. But when you start seeing reviews of people talking about cats and they're just kind of being like, yo, you have no clue how bad this movie is. And I was just like, can't be that bad. I mean, you know, it all started with the initial trailer when it was released. And uh, if you saw that, basically they're, what they do, the way the movie's made is there's, it's live performances, live actors, face. I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not even sure if they did like motion cap. Like I feel like the, the effects were an after effect, but uh, after idea, but they basically give them all cat CG bodies and... But not hands or feet. No. Or faces. No, because that would be too much on a performance. <laughs> yeah. So there's it's this crazy, absurd thing to watch where famous actors like Judi Dench, Ian McKellen, Ildris Elba uh, are... Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, yeah. There's like... Uh, there's, well, I, have, I have things to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the cast. And they just... I don't know. I don't even know how to explain... Like, normally I could say... They compose like they put the po the head on a CG body, but that wasn't even the case. They like CG skinned the actors they just... to make them look kind of cat like. It's almost like if you're playing a video game and you get a mod. Like I have, like I just started doing a lot of mods mm. on my computer, so like you can make the one bad guy in Resident Evil Thomas the Tank Engine. So like Thomas <laughs> just chases you the whole game. I feel like this movie was like a game that someone's like, "Yo, I found a mod that turns them all into cats." So you got the same face, facial expressions. Everything is uh, like pretty standard, but they're just cats now. Would they have fur and uh, tails and expressive ears? Yeah, ears. yeah. I don't know. What did you? I mean, do you saw the trailer? Like, would you, were you kind of keeping up on this? Well, I mean, not really. Actually, I, I saw the trailer, but in retrospect, like this movie, like if it was well done, probably would be <laughs> tailored to me. But it's it accidentally was. tailored to me in the way they did not want it to. Because I, I love cats, I love musicals, and I even like Taylor Swift sometimes. And um, Yeah, of course. They really missed the boat on it. And I was looking it up too, dude. They You're saying they missed the boat? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they nailed it in being such a terrible fucking movie that I'll watch it all the time. But, like, Whew. they they spent $95 million on it. And they ninety five and the, million dollars on yeah, the and the opening weekend grossed uh, six point five million. <laughs> so with uh, your help out there, we can get it up. Well, with the eighty nine million left, it's good to know. Uh, you know, like the reason why people don't vote is because they think their vote gets lost <laughs> in like the grand like see like we live in New York State, so it's like why would I vote Democrat when the state always you know goes Democrat? So I felt at least with this because so few people added to the box office numbers i feel like we really made a difference here like <laughs> yeah i bought four tickets to this movie so I, <laughs> at least four times twelve dollars is mine like i i did that i helped judy dench and ian mckellen and to, who's it tom hooper oh, dude yeah it was that who's that the magic <laughs> I think that was hat? the director oh, was that the, oh yeah. the director <laughs> he which really was, needs it was so hard because you're watching it and we're we were kind of really hoping we'd be the only ones in the theater so we could just talk during the entire movie because this is the kind of movie that we knew walking in this was going to be a fucking travesty. Like, we heard it. We heard it how bad it was. And we're like, this sounds like a Christmas Eve movie. Like, we had work today. <laughs> we're like, we're going to get to work early. Go, go straight there. Go straight to the theater. We got a bunch of fucking junk food. Got stomach aches. Uh, <laughs> I'm full of popcorn. and I'm nauseous from what I've just seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say that in all the years I've been going to movies, 
I very rarely, I think maybe except for when I saw like Transformers 2 or something where at least, but that was like, even I got towards the end of that movie before I was like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I knew I was, I thought I was prepared for this movie and I was not prepared for this yeah, movie. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know like what to expect. And just like our, our initial, like we get there. First of all, can I, I didn't even talk to you about this. We had, of all the seats in the theater, there happened to be two people who chose <laughs> seats right next to us. Yeah. Like, I, so we had to be quiet and making fun of it because right next to my boyfriend was two people who were genuinely there to see it and enjoying it and also enjoying the Toyota commercials before oh, it. Yeah. That's what he said when we were walking out. He's like, I knew, because we were asking him when we walked out because we felt kind of bad because, all right, let's put it this way. There was ten seats bought, like there was ten tickets for this for this showing. Four of us, four of it was us. And at the time, I bought the tickets. We were the only ones. When we got in there, there was two kind of people in the front. There was us four in like the prime seats, like E row. And then there was a couple of people behind us. There was two other people that kind of came. There were in two other people in front of us that as left well. immediately. <laughs> they left. No, no, it was like twenty minutes okay. into the movie. They got like twenty they, minutes, they, and then they just. They, like, they ran out and were joking, like, this isn't Star Wars. <laughs> I'm sure that they were just movie hopping, but I like to think that they were like, this is terrible, and, and, I re- and I'm and i going to get my money back. I'm not going to participate in this box office. Well, if they were movie hopping or uh, or sneaking into theater, they got their due <laughs> because they they realized what was going on. And then we were joking, too, like, like maybe they thought it was Star Wars, and they're like, wow, they really, you know, they really separated themselves from The Last Jedi on this one. I can see why everyone's complaining. Yeah. <laughs> no, so... So all the seats, the two next to us, like right next to us, is a couple, like an older couple who were like, they looked at the, like when they're buying the tickets, they must have been like, oh, we'll just get the two right next to the other fucking four people in the theater, which made me feel so bad because, and I was kind of like, it was like my wife, me, it was you, then your boyfriend, and then that couple to the left. Yeah. And your boyfriend has a pretty deep voice too. So (laughs) I I just felt so bad because they're probably there to actually watch the movie and not coming from like a 90s cynical, like, oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to watch this movie crash and burn. And especially too, he was making like sexual noises (laughs) when all the cats, there's a thing in the movie where like, instead of kissing or hugging, the cats would very sensually touch each other's faces. Yeah. They would rub like a head rub. So every time Joss would be like, oh, like just... (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Dude. All right. So, okay. Let's start from the beginning. So, yeah, that was a little hard because I kind of felt bad, but it didn't stop me because every time they finished a song, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I loved it because you would just do one clap <laughs> and that's it. And then, and then it's, and then we just went on. Because the way they would end, you would just be like, should I be clapping? Because like, I, I see, uh, I'm not like, I don't like, I'm not the biggest Broadway aficionado, but I, me and my wife have been going for the last couple of years. Like we've seen a few. Uh, here and there, like Beetlejuice, Carol King, a bunch of stuff, and uh, you know when the when a, when they end a musical number, you're supposed to fucking clap. Especially the way they end it, they end it very suddenly. Like I've and seen done. other musicals where it's like if it's if it's a movie, they they slowly uh, like fade out of it. But so so the opening of the movie too that I noticed, and throughout other parts of the movie, I don't know if this was like a reference to the play. I hadn't seen the play. Um, but my boyfriend has, and I would kind of ask him, like, was this in it? Which was hilarious, because he was the only one that knew anything about it. Like, I didn't know a fucking thing about Cats. Like, I grew up in the 90s, and I was aware of it. You would see the commercials, like, Cats on Broadway, and, you know, I just wasn't a cat guy growing up, so, like, that didn't catch me. Just the word cats (laughs) wasn't enough, and, uh, I think my parents saw, I think you were talking to my parents, right, earlier? Yeah, your mom's like, oh, it's terrible on Broadway. (laughs) She was talking shit about it. She's like, "Uh, that and, um, and Grease on Broadway. She hates both of those. Yeah, so, yeah, my parents did the same thing where, like, back in the day, they had, like, a little Broadway moment where they were going and collecting the play, the playbills, which is, like, the little, like, everything about it, which is mostly ads now. Yeah. It's, like, five pages of actual information about the play, but, yeah, dude, I don't know. Like, it was so weird, and, like, I, you watch plays, and... Okay, so my first real concept, like, my first comment on this movie, really, is that I think, before we get any farther, is that it, the movie didn't work. That's pretty obvious. We're going to go into detail why. But I think the reason why it, didn't go, why it didn't work, the big overarching aspect, is that this was clearly something that's supposed to be a play, that you're supposed to see performers perform, and instead you just got CG cat people that made you not appreciate any of, like, the work. Yeah, it was very apparent that this movie that this production is not about the content 
but that's fine when you're seeing it in person because it's more impressive to see somebody dance and sing like that. I don't care what they're singing. I don't care what they're dancing about. If it looks good in person, I'm impressed, and that's fine. Yeah, sure. Movie, not the case. Like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have something. Something, a little something. But you're saying like what about uh, the way the movie started? It started out with this like really uncomfortable music. That's <laughs> it sounded exactly like it was from oh, A Clockwork Orange. It, like the whole thing. Like I, almost so like the fake like like the key, synth. Key, it was like yes. a synthy keyboard. Yes. Which was funny because towards the later half of the movie, I, that was like my favorite part. Like when that synthy keyboard came in, I'm like, at least that's interesting because everything else. But it didn't even match anything. No, and there'd be no. so many parts where it's Very like 90s. It's in like a gritty like in the like in one of the opening scenes like they're in the gritty alley and they're singing all this stuff about like life in the streets and then out of nowhere the same setting the same dark setting and then it's like happy music and you're like wait i thought this was like really great okay it's a lot yeah. of tone changes right yeah. yeah uncomfortable tone changes but so i didn't understand the plot <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking understatement the whole time especially in the beginning we're just looking at each other like what the fuck is What is happening? a Jericho cat? What is it? I had to, like, as soon as we got home. <laughs> Did you home, Google it? No, well, I Googled, I have the Wikipedia of, like, what it's about. And just because I didn't even know what the word was. It's a jellical. Jell? I, I thought it was an R. No, it's J-E-L-L-I-C-L-E. Jellical, like jelly, but jellical. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Jellical cats are a type of felines. First mentioned by T.S. Eliot's poem, The Five Finger Exercises, and later developed... In his 1939 light poetry book, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, they were given further characterization in Cats, the stage musical, uh, which was composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber. So there's a little information for you guys, uh, which is also based on Eliot's book. So I guess it was a book and a poem by T.S. Eliot, and then that was like the phrase he used to describe this group. Okay. So basically, the plot, from what I can gather, because I really don't want to read much more about it, because I don't really want to retain a lot of this information. Uh, That's why I was like, let's record instantly, because I don't want to think about this for days. <laughs> but I guess... You didn't want to, like, sit and pick it apart, like, really deeply? Dude, Star Wars, <laughs> like, coming out of Star Wars, being a long-time Star Wars fan, I had to, like, think about it for a few days and, like, like watch reviews and read articles and, like, really compose myself. And even then, when I did the review with Connor... Uh, I saw it again, like, right afterwards, like, that day, and coming out of it, I was like, damn, I had so many more thoughts coming after it, because, like, there was all kinds of lines I missed. I never want to see this fucking movie again. <laughs> like, I I was really, like, I checked my watch 25 minutes in, like, I was like, holy shit, because I guess the plot is, was it, Victoria is the main cat? Who barely fucking even she has lines in this movie. She gets abandoned, and then... Not just abandoned, she, thrown, with a, like, in a bag. Which I'm like, <laughs> how big was this human? What did the... You know, it shows, like, an average human, and then throws the bag, and then all the cats. Which, a big theme throughout the whole movie is, like, nothing matches in size. Sizes of everything changes. Nothing's shoes... And forks, like, they show all these, like, items being oh, larger man. in railroads, but then, like, some stuff is crazy big, some stuff is a little bit big, and, like, look, I understand, like, it's talking cats, I shouldn't expect a lot of it, but, like, any continuity of any type would help me understand where I am. Yeah, so, basically, yeah, the size uh, continuity was really all over the place. Like, uh, I remember specifically because... I, w I was kind of noticing it. Like, I was like, hmm. Because like, there's, they're, they're supposed to be, they're cats. And they're supposed to be cat size. And they're going in and out of houses and alleyways and trash cans. And there's actually some beautiful set design. Like, there's some really gorgeous. A lot of it was actually practical, which was crazy to me. Like, the trash cans were actual things that they were pulling down. Like, the, the one uh, Jennifer Huston was, like, singing next to, like, a lamppost. But it was actually, like, a lamppost that she was leaning on. Like, this huge thing. And then, like, the rooms and stuff. But then there would be they'd be holding or interacting with things, and sometimes you're just like, "Wait, what?" Because, like, I think we noticed that it's really obvious with the tap. There's like a tap dancing cat, and you see him tap dancing, and suddenly he's tap dancing on like a uh, like subway rail, not subway, but like railroad, oh, railroad like, train, yeah. like train tracks. And suddenly they're like the size of mice because the tracks are like as wide as a fucking car to them, and they're dancing on it, and like. I mean, I'm not the most well-versed man of the world, but I've seen train tracks. I live but next then, to... And then immediately after that, they're inside the actual train from the train tracks, and oh, then yeah. they're more cat-sized, if not bigger. Or even, like, the magic cat, uh, he, like, was pulling stuff out, and he had, like, a dice, like, a die, and it was, like, 
It was huge. It was like the fucking Hellraiser box. And then like, and then he pulls out a fork, which was like barely double that size. So I'm like, dice is dice aren't half the size of forks. Like <laughs> that's anything. Like everything in it, constant changes in size, which is becomes real obvious because everyone's human shaped, even though they're supposed to yeah. be cats. But so then the plot of it is is so Victoria's thrown in there. You said you didn't know the fucking plot. I, from what I'm <laughs> guess, from what I was able to to Piece surmise. Together. Is and then uh, that she happens to be thrown in the street the night of the jellical jellical ball ball where they were some old cat. I gotta look it up now. Not just some <laughs> fucking old cat. The old cat picks somebody to be reincarnated. Deuteronomy, played by Judy Dench, was the old cat. Oh, okay. Which was another one of these like classic actors. Where and they're it, like these poor fucking people in this movie. I feel like and what I feel like happened too is like because not. The, I feel like the actors weren't necessarily bad. They were just in bad situations. And I think that everybody who participated in it were, was really into the play. Like, I'm sure everybody there well, is, a, is an actor who's like, I love cats. I would love to be in this. And then they just like, they, you know, they probably didn't know what was going to be around them. That's a very classic problem with special effects is that you don't see the special effects, right? Obviously, like if you watch like anything like Avengers, like when they're filming the Thanos scenes, mm-hmm. if you see how they're filming it, they're literally just holding a stick with a picture of Thanos' face on it. So that way you have the eye level. So they know, okay, he's 12 feet tall or whatever. So you have to just put a lot of trust into the, the production and the special effects and how the movie's going to come out. You have no fucking clue. And not only that, you're done filming in like whatever three six months and then it could be like six months to a year before post-production is done no one in this movie knew what the fuck was going to happen to their their faces like like if they knew walking in that their faces were going to look like this and like i'm sure they wouldn't have been as amped about it because you got like ian mckellen's doing like scenes and like they're all acting but they didn't know what was going to happen to them it's like it's almost like deep fakes you heard of deep fakes no. No, it's like a there's like a really like a relatively inexpensive CG program that pretty much anyone could buy. Mm. And you can use it. What it does, it actually copies someone's face and it can map it onto someone else's face. So people have done it with like Jim think, Carrey yeah, and the Shining. I was just gonna say I saw that one. Um it's uh it's very controversial because people are taking like actresses' face mm-hmm. and putting them on porn stars with like similar builds and stuff doing like that. Doing God's work. Yeah. <laughs> just doing what we were you know, like the drawing you would do in high school, like, oh wouldn't that be great? Uh <laughs> It feels like that. Like, it feels like yes. someone just used that and then CG'd every, like, famous actor's faces on everybody. But it's crazy because the story, like you said, there's the Jellicle Ball or the Jellicle Night. It's like a once-a-year thing with the moon or whatever. And I guess the concept is Judy Dench's character will pick somebody to start a new life, which is very ambiguous. They don't really explain it. And it's hilarious when you see, like, the way it looks at the end of the movie. And everybody has to give a performance to win it and kind of like some fucking American Idol shit and they do it by having to be like honest about who they are or why they want it which I didn't really yeah I didn't wasn't too sold on any of that did you catch why so then there's the other character played by Jennifer Hudson who ends up becoming you know a main character but for some reason she's like exiled I didn't catch why. Yeah, so uh, Victoria, the main cat, she gets dumped. She gets uh, immediately swallowed into this movie that never fucking stops singing. Like, There's no breaks. There's barely. No, there's like like maybe 10 seconds of breaks Like to the point where I was literally looking at my wife being like, I just want them to stop singing for five seconds so someone can explain to me. What's happening in this you know movie? How, you know how they have, like, videos where it's, like, Shrek, but, like, without the main characters or something? <laughs> I want to see a YouTube video where it's, like, cats, but only parts without singing. And it's, like, two minutes Yeah, long. it can't be that long. <laughs> like, and it was, um, uh, that one woman who's, like, what is she, like, Reba Wilson? Rebel Wilson, yeah. yeah. she's in it. She plays one of the cats. And Her scene is the infamous scene everybody talks about. Which one's that? How they're, like, they're, they're all talking about Because everyone's talking about how cats are going to have their legs spread throughout it. But the only scene I saw that was Rebel Wilson when they, her opening scene where she's laying down, falls, gets up, and starts scratching her crotch, her crotch, yeah. but with the camera at an angle where it's between <laughs> her legs while yeah. she's doing it. It was so weird. Oh man, yeah. So she's the only one that does anything that's kind of remotely not singing in the movie, and and mm-hmm. her parts are just as painful to the point where I'm like, I don't know, maybe the singing is better because. 
her moments were just these really bad puns and jokes like you know cat got your tongue and you know like i don't know whatever she says like three things she does like a little action thing at the end where she like whips a dude with a chain and hits him in the balls it's so cringy they, i can't get over that cannot be in the play right like no, that has to be something they added in everything with the with the port there's a there's a point in the movie where like so there's this character who in the play <laughs> is only in one scene as like a bad guy but oh, they make the, him the constant the antagonist. Mean, the mean cat? The, the magic one who, who for some reason, has the magical power to... And spoiler alert, sorry to ruin this for people. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to spoil this movie for you. <laughs> if you don't fucking know already. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if it wasn't crazy enough, the main antagonist is a magic cat. Oh, each cat... Okay, the theme of the movie is that... <laughs> You're like, okay, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Dude, trying to talk about this movie is like trying to, like, deal with a traumatic event where, like, it just happened to you. Like, I've been robbed at gunpoint and, like... The police talk to you afterwards, and you just have to keep telling the story over, and then you have to keep trying to put it in order. You're like, wait, okay, guy came in, then what happened? All right, well, I, okay, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention, you know. Like, I feel like it's more like when you wake up and you're like, dude, I just had the craziest dream, and yeah. you're just like, oh wait, and then that happened. I a totally feverish forgot. dream. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so they they're all competing to win this. Uh, I don't know trip or or re like reincarnation reincarnation or a second chance of life. There's a lot. Of the jokes or like comments on cat you know how many laughs cats have and the main antagonist is a magic cat who's trying to magically get everyone out of the running so he can win right yeah but he does it after they've already done their performance yeah like the like he's not they're not not showing up to it they do their performance and then he he magically transport transports them to this barge. like barge yeah, yeah where they he just teleport people. chain them down and he's like you can't win if you're not there which um, is funny because the one that decides it is judy dench's cat character the old cat yeah like, and I, I said it to my wife I'm very like, subjective yeah i'm like he, she could just be like go fuck off which is exactly what she does in the movie like at the end he's like you're gonna pick me and she's like no fuck off never <laughs> and then he's just like well fuck you i'm gonna teleport everybody um but yeah so there's this scene you said that scene the- wasn't in it in the no, none of the barge. And one thing that bugged me was like, so in the beginning, um, one of the like I think it's like the third musical number. It's hard to tell because it, there's no break in between any of the musical there numbers. There's so many. It's just like maybe a pause. Like there's no there's maybe a sentence spoken and then next song and then like so yeah, there's they don't a song. Stop. So Rebel Wilson's opening song, she does this whole performance, and it gets it's where you're like this movie's crazy, and then she does her performance. You're like. What the fuck is this movie? I you didn't think it could be what she did and and she there's like all what these What was that song? 5, 4, 3, 2, I couldn't even tell. It wasn't in the alleyway. They break out of the alleyway and then they're like we got to go watch this cat. And then it's the the Reba, am I Reba? Reba? Rebel. 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 Yeah, Rebel Wilson's uh song. But her, even her song like there was you have to prepare people for things like this. Like because her song involves Mice that are cockro- children. And the mice are CG. Are children's faces CG'd onto <laughs> mice bodies? Dude, it was nightmarish, dude. It was so nightmarish. And then there's cockroaches, and they're like eating the cockroaches. But the cockroaches are sentient. Yeah, so they, they have people faces too. Which yeah. it made me mad because at one point you hear a dog. There's like a scene where there's a dog chasing, like not really a chase, but there's a threat of a dog. And I was really hoping to see the dog. Like, I want to see a dog with a human face. Yeah. Because I saw mice with human faces, cockroaches with human faces. A human with human face. And humans with human faces, even though that <laughs> still wasn't more normal than anything else that happened in the movie, <laughs> even as rare as that was. But yeah, dude, her scene was like early 20 minutes in, and you're already like, what? I think that's when the people walked out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, right after hers, they were just like, not buying nope. it. Nope. I'm, wor- I'm gonna go watch fucking Die Hard or Frozen Two or some sh- something that's good. So, but what I was getting is, is there's a part in her musical number where she, where Rebel Wilson unzips her fur. Oh my god, that's and, right. And reveals she does it her later too. In yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's in her fur, so she unzips her fur to reveal that she still has fur, but now also has on 
a like performance like a Las Vegas like sequiny kind of and you're like okay but you know what like in that scene it's forgivable because it's like yeah it's supposed to be showy right you're like it's part of the performance it no, nothing makes sense but I'm so I'm okay with it. like I've seen stuff it's like a cartoon where they you know oh rip it off and I'm in a tuxedo now and yeah and this like dance the way number. the genie does it in like yes Aladdin, exactly but he so, has magic powers she's not even the magic cat there's specifically a cat who is a magic cat there's and it's, two <laughs> well, there's the bad, evil magic cat, and then there's, like, the Magical good... Mr. Mistopheles. Yeah, that Mistopheles. So, so I was like, all right, I, I'm accepting of this outfit change. That's pretty exciting. And so then, towards the end of the movie, um, along with other characters, Rebel Wilson oh has God. been captured and chained down by the evil cat. And, and, and then she realizes, after sitting there for oh. a number of hours... She realizes, oh, wait, I can simply unzip my fur and that'll get me out of the chains. And she unzips her fur and is in the same costume that she unveiled in so her opening number. Does she put the fur back on? She, at some point, she must have put <laughs> the fur zip- back on. The incon- Yeah, like you said, like a fever dream because you're just watching this and you're like, wait, what? Like, the rules are insane. Like, the rules don't make any... Like, okay... I can buy one cat is so evil that he's magic. He's like, you know, evil, dark magic cat. But he wasn't even an evil. He just wanted, uh, like, to leave or whatever. Everyone was talking shit about him. There was the Jennifer Hudson cat, which, as far as I can understand, I guess she helped him or worked with him at some point, so everyone hated her for working with the evil cat. And then some of them had coats. Like, a lot of cats wore coats. Some had pants. Some had shoes. That's... My problem was the feet because the feet, I, I, if they all wore shoes, I'd be happy. But the ones who didn't wear shoes had these insane CG toes that just the like toes, yeah. basically they, I, what I assume happened was that they filmed it wearing shoes and then CG'd on top of that, the feet, the human looking feet, instead of just letting being like, I don't think they were like perform barefoot and we'll CG that. I think they wore shoes and had to CG feet back onto them because all the feet were human feet, but too large. Why not just put people in costumes and do makeup and let it win an award for like Broadway style makeup and, and, and yeah. outfits instead of this insane CG thing that they did that was or, just crazy to see. If you're going to CG it, just make them look like real life cats. Well, that's the other thing too, right? So you start watching it, and then you're like, "All right, they're 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 human faces with like human shaped bodies, anthropomorphic style, but they have fur, but they don't have paws." Which is funny because they do a lot of paw jokes, like you know, cross paws, and it's like you don't even have paws; you have hands, and they they have tails. And, okay, there was times where it looked good. Like, there was times where the fur looked really good. The textures looked really good. There was a lot of good matching. But then at the same time, as as good as some of the effects were, there was also times where the effects didn't work at all. Well, I noticed there were scenes where, like, their faces would move slightly, like, out of sync with their mm-hmm. body. And then you would just have this weird floating face thing. It's like when you see like a YouTube video and someone puts like a mouth over like a cat, you know, and it's like just a human mouth moving like a, like that orange, like what was yeah. that video with the orange. It was like that kind of shit. And you're just, and I can't, it just boggles the mind that they would put the effort into all this instead of just doing fucking makeup and costume. Because like I was saying, the whole point of everything you're seeing is that they're performing, right? So the main cat, Victoria, which was played by, uh, I thought this would be like faster to find on the list. I got it. I got it. Well, um, uh, so you got the main kitten, Victoria, and... Francesca Hayward. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be, like, an actual dancer. Just, like, a first movie. Yeah, movie. yeah. yeah you doesn't... could tell by how she danced that she was a, a ballerina. Like, a fucking actual yeah. dancer, right? So they have all this, like, these shots of, like, people doing, like, a tap dancing thing. Or the there was, like, these two cats at one point that just did, like, a crazy, like, you know, dance, like, where they're kind of falling over and stuff. And then you have her, who's doing very ballerina, very graceful, and then all this stuff. But you can't take any of it seriously because it's so CG'd and there's so much computer graphic overlay that it's it's not impressive. Like, I don't want to see a CG character do a dance that I could watch a human do, even though I'm sure they're doing it right over a human's performance. But because it's computer graphic, I don't care. 
because it's not impressive. Like when you go see a Broadway play, what's impressive about it is they're doing it right in front of you. They don't have mics. They're yelling. They're projecting. They're moving. They can't fuck it up. Like so, when you do, it's like the same way like TV. Like they'll do like oh like Peter Pan with Christopher Walken. You know, it's the play, but it's on TV. But it's like it's like just seeing fireworks on TV. It's like you're taking all the work out of it that makes it impressive because you're not seeing it in real life because that's what gives it the gravity. But even then, like, I could uh, understand, like, when they do those, like, hey, on TV we're doing, you know, like a performance like how they did, I don't know, Rocky Horror. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that was bad, but anyway. But it's like because well, most it's people still, can't get to a Broadway play. Yeah, so, it's yeah. but it's still people doing the performance. Like, even when you watch, like, a movie like, <clears throat> like Black Swan, how they have like ballerinas and stuff. Like, so, some of the dance moves are still impressive. They're still showing you like, like humans dancing. They're just filming it, yeah. you know. But it's the fact that it's like you can't see any of like the intricacies or like how actually, you know, how much work they actually put into it because they literally painted over it with fake fur. Yeah, that it doesn't line up well. It's like a. Uh... It was like a new bastardization of old rotoscoping where like back yes. in like the early Disney and they still do it to a degree uh, where basically they would have a live action performance and then they would just take the frames with that acetate and they would go over it and they would basically draw over live action to get like to just basically capture like the way they do motion capture with computer graphics now like Andy Serkis doing Gollum and Lord of the Rings. But back in the day, they would just draw over each frame and that's what they felt like it was like a new version of that with this mm-hmm. where they just cg'd over it but it also but it gets rid of it you know like it it makes it pointless to watch it's like when you if you watch like uh like with the disney app me and my wife started watching the disney movies in order and you watch like snow white and the seven dwarves and snow white looks so weird compared to the dwarves because the dwarves are actually drawn like they're drawn and they're they're characters it actually made me made me think of snow white while watching it. it almost like i can't explain it but it almost makes it look like they're moving slower you know what i mean like it's probably something to do with the frame rate or something yeah I don't know, man. It was fucking weird. And then to my next point I want to bring up to kind of give you an idea how fucking weird this movie is. I want to read the list of the cat names because (laughs) the whole movie is just each cat doing a number about themselves, basically. So you had like a magic cat and like a street cat and like there was these two like fucking cat that like steal shit, like, you know, that were kind of like involved with the bad guy towards the end. You got the evil cat, you got... Old cat, you got old lady cat, you like, dude, it was crazy. Like, you got fat you got cat, sexy cat, yeah, you got sexy cat, you got fat cat, fatter cat, you got Taylor Swift cat. So here's, <laughs> this is not in any particular order, I guess. This is just a cast order. So, uh, but here's the cat names. You got Booster for Jones, Old Deuteronomy, which is Judy Dent. She's like the main point of the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Rum Tum Tugger, not too bad. You got Ildris Elba playing McCavity. Who's the bad guy? So you hear the word McCavity. The whole fucking time. But we'll just listen to how crazy this shit gets. Grizabella, Gus the Theater Cat. Well, that's not too bad, but you got Jenny Any Dots, Victoria, who's the main character. You got Bomba Lorena, Corey Capot, Socrates Plato, Jemima, Jungo Jerry, Mr. Mistopheles, who was, I guess, like the one of the main the, characters. The love interest, I guess. Yeah. Monka Strap. Monka Strap? Skimble Shanks. Skimble Shank? Rumple Teaser. Uh, Demeter, Alonzo, Jelly, Dorum, Electra, Tantom- Tantomile, Cassandra, uh, Adamitis, Growl Tiger, and Maitre D. So it's just like... There is a woman in this world who has that many cats, and that's all their names. If I was an old lady... <laughs> I was wondering the whole time, I was like, I wonder if you have a fucking cat named one of these. Like, do you have a... <laughs> Mif- Mis- I can't... Mistopheles? Mr. Mistopheles? That's gonna be my next cat's name. Dude, Mr. Mistopheles. Uh, just because he's like the magic cat, and he's like a meek, right? Like, he performs, but then, Yeah. Uh, that's giving the movie a lot of credit, because it makes it sound like there's a plot. But there, <laughs> there isn't a fucking plot to this movie. Oh, God, it was so weird. There was just, And then there was just so many little things that, like, made us crack up, too. Like, uh, when uh, McCavity, the evil cat, like, he disappears, and he's like, meow! He just, yeah, like, he just throws his hand up and like, meow! <laughs> just, which I was but that's kind of, the only time he does it! It's not even his calling card. Just, I knew where No, he, I know. I wish he did it so much more. Yeah. I wanted to see more, like, things like that. When there was, like... Again, it was the like, same thing with the CG. There were so many times it looked good for what it was and then there were so many times where it just didn't work at all oh you know what really didn't work um <laughs> the, was when um yeah <laughs> was when was when they're like i got an idea cats movie um when mr 
Or is it, or no, I think it's just McCavity. When they took his coat off and revealed his fur, <laughs> and unfortunately for the movie, the fur they put him in is the same color as his skin tone. Yeah, so Ildris like, Elba, who is a pretty famous uh, African-American, or British, you think he's a British uh, actor. From The Office. Uh, yes, he was in The Office. Uh, that's where you know him from. I know him as uh, Heimdall from the Thor movies. He's, mm. uh, which, I remember when they got cast, Heimdall, I think, literally in Viking Wars, like the whitest of Vikings, and they cast this big black dude to play him. So a lot of people are mad about that. But Ildris Elba, you know, he's been rumored to do a new James Bond. Uh, he's a great actor. I love the guy. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, so he's the bad cat, so he's supposed to be, like, a darker black cat. And then, yeah, when he takes off his coat... He's he, dark brown. But he has, like, smooth fur. Which you was, see... Everyone else has, like, kind of more frayed-out cat fur. Yeah. And he had, like, a smooth, like, a panther kind of fur. And it just made him look like he was fucking naked. It's, it was very <laughs> uncomfortable. Even the part, too, that made me uncomfortable was, like, when, um... <laughs> Everything who played the old cat? Yeah. Judy, yeah. Judy Dench. The old cat? The main cat? No, the cat? man... Oh, Ian um, McKellen. Yeah, who when, played like Magneto and uh, Gandalf and yes. Lord Rings. Um, there's a scene where like at first he comes out, he's in a robe, and then he <laughs> stands up and like the robe opens and it looks like he's <laughs> accidentally flashing you. Yeah, it was like an old like an old dude with his dick hanging out. Like, yeah, I mean, there's no dick, but you're just like, oh, is he flashing us? Because again, some of them were hats, some of them were pants, some of them were shoes. I thought so. One of you guys mentioned it, like, "Is he wearing shoes?" And then I yeah. looked up and I was like, "No, I don't see shoes." And then like twenty minutes later, they're like, "They're all wearing shoes." Like, what? No, all, no, no, they weren't all wearing shoes. I'm sorry, that would have been a mischaracterization <laughs> of this film. Oh god, that was weird. But yeah, it, even like that scene with Ian McKellen, like they when they cut back to him because he's a theater cat, like he's an old theater cat. I guess that's how cats are. And uh, he's like sipping like milk out of a saucer or sipping water out of a using saucer. his tongue and so but it's funny because it's like kind of head height so he's just kind of leaning over like the most <laughs> awkward like thing ever and he's just like <laughs> he was the best though just because like before that scene like when they went in there he was just like meow 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 yeah. <laughs> did you catch that shit <laughs> yo it was so weird it was so fucking funny i felt bad for that couple because we were talking hard like yeah. we were trying that we were keeping it low tone for what we wanted to do but uh, if I was the couple next theater. to him, uh, dude, I thought about it. Like, if, <laughs> if I was in a bawling like moment right now with like money, I'd be like, "Boom, yeah, I'll buy thirty five seats out or whatever the fuck amount of seats it is." <laughs> oh man, but that yeah, would change the game for the box office for them. Woo, just buy the whole theater. I don't want anybody fucking else. And then if you see two hundred people in there, you're like, get the fuck out of here. That's my seat. E A one to fucking F twelve are mine. <laughs> Dude, um, but yeah, there was just so many weird scenes, man. You know what know. really disappointed me was Taylor Swift's performance. I had yeah. such high hopes for her. Because... I didn't know she was in it until the moment her like cat started coming down, and then she did the kind of like a drug scene with the catnip, and then you're like, that's Taylor Swift. I was like, what? I, was, I like, saw it. didn't even it. show her face yet, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, because I saw it in the previews, and uh, I was like, oh, Taylor Swift's in this? And I'm like, I know Taylor Swift loves like actual cats, like she's obsessed with them. So I'm like, she must love the cast movie. She's gonna really that bring would make it. Sense. She probably loves this play because she's a musician who loves cats. And I'm like, she's gonna sell it. And her performance was garbage. Yeah, you were. She into just it? no, dude. She like, I mean, I don't want to say she's one of the best singers, you know, but like she can sing. But the whole time she whispered, sang, she whisper sang. Because they were trying to do, like, that sultry kind of, like, uh, cabaret-style song where it was like... Ugh, not the girl but, for it. Yeah, she's not... She's not... I don't want to crack on Taylor Swift. I I think she's good for what she does. You know, there's some songs I like. I don't... Yeah. Really, I really don't listen to her in general, but she's not... She's not Adele, all right? Like, like fun fact, Adele and Taylor Swift are the same age. So just remember yeah. the two different ways you can go down the music industry. <laughs> like, you can be a perpetual, tw- you know, 16-year-old singer, or you could be like Adele, who, like, at 19, was just bailing out, like, you know, rolling in the deep and stuff. So, yeah. But, yeah, it didn't have uh, didn't have any power. I, and I think she could have. I think they were just like, no, this character is going to be, like, more sultry. And she's like, okay, like, the whole time. And then has, like, a really bad British accent. So I'm looking it up. Uh, Cats ended in 2002 on Broadway. Mm. I guess it started in uh, eight, 1982. So it was in, there was over almost 9,000 like showings of it. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But see, that's that was going to be kind of like my next point. It's odd that this movie came out at all. Like, 
it you know it's been what's well, it's about to be 2020 we're coming up on the new year that's like 18 years like if you were born the year which is like the year i graduated high school if you were born in 2002 you would be turning 18 this coming year you have no clue about this you, you know you wouldn't have seen on tv you wouldn't have seen any commercials for it and then this crazy ass fucking movie comes out and the funny part is it's like the same producers as like Les Miserables and stuff like that so because they've had recent success with like these broadway adaptations but this just is not this is not how you do a broadway <laughs> adaptation. Is that how you do a movie no it's not. it's not yeah just like a movie standpoint you know like like, you know, I go through this a lot of comic books, and you see this with a lot of stuff, where when they're adapting something to, like, the big screen, you know, the silver screen, you gotta make certain compromises, like, alright, this character doesn't work, you know, maybe in the book it works, but, you know, we have two hours to tell this story, or even, like, the new Star Wars, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people aggravated that, you know, because the movie was, like, two, two and a half hours long, that there was, you know, they tried to cram too much story into two and a half hours. This was an hour and 15 minutes, and I wanted to claw my fucking eyes out 20 minutes in because there was no actual plot. The plot is just they're all competing for this thing, this, like, MacGuffin, and everybody's just singing, and there's just fucking 15, 20 songs. Like, they just, like you said, maybe two minutes of non-singing in the whole fucking movie. Like, And that's not even, like, us being, like, like oh, like, they're just over-dramatizing how bad, like, the... No, they don't talk at all. But it's so hard, it, which makes it, like so much harder to keep track of what's going on because they're like like because singing is just like random weird poetry and you're like how am i supposed to piece together a plot when there's just like no information no yeah and you just want them to stop just to give me a fucking minute just so i could breathe between performances like any play i've seen like i said no no i haven't seen every play but the plays i have seen they do a number but then it goes down to a plot and then they talk they set themselves into the next scene or the next, uh, you know, uh, like, like they'll change the, the environment or they'll move the, you know, the stuff around so they can get it set up for the next, you know, set piece. And then they do another song. I can't understand how I, I've never seen the cats play, but I'm like, the, if, are there this fucking rapid fire? Like they have to stop to change the sets, right? Like, cause another thing too, we're talking about inconsistencies in size, but there's just inconsistencies in the world because Okay, they're doing cat things, going out like cat doors and jumping in like trash cans. But then they go to like a milk bar. Is that for cats or is that for yeah. people? And then there's the Egyptian house, so they're obviously a lot of cat references. But it's like that didn't seem like a place that was meant for people. You know, what I mean, like the stuff they were dancing around, like the stage, and like even like that moon Taylor Swift kind of like got dropped down on, like you know, like mm-hmm. got presented on. Those were all cat sized. You know, what I mean, or a size, you know, comparison to them. So. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. So, you know, you do something like this and, you, you know, there's no consistency. I don't know what's happening. And, like, <laughs> I'm just losing my fucking mind. And, you know, you can't, you know, when you make a movie or, like I was saying, when you adapt something, you got to make choices. And this, like, they didn't take anything out. And then I, I just don't understand how there's any, sto- like, there's no, there's no breathing room between any fucking songs. Like, you're just like, yeah. oh, my God, just go, 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 go. Oh, God. Even any, like, musical movie I've seen, like, Hairspray or anything like that. Like, there's, yeah. like, some plot, some break, and yeah. then... Or Grease, like, you know? They yeah. talk, they do stuff between fucking songs. It's not just one giant soundtrack. It's like, oh, the, the songs are supposed to just add to it. It, it was, uh... And then there was a few of the songs where that thing, and my wife kind of mentioned to me, like, she leaned over, it was like, I hate when they just sing talk. And you're like, yeah. Like, when they're... <laughs> Like, they could just be talking right now, but they have to sing it like, I have to sing this moment <laughs> as I stare at you. And nothing rhymed. Dude, it was driving me crazy how nothing rhymed in any of the songs. Yeah. Like, they would say something, I'm like, no, don't, why would you say, like, I can immediately think of a word that does the same thing that rhymes. And then, like, when they're on the barge and, like, all there's all the hostage cats, like, like the one cat even talks shit to the evil cat, like, the one, like, that. Oh, yeah, the he makes cat. fun He's of like, them. that doesn't even rhyme. And then he, like... What does he do? Stab his head? And then he the... takes he, somehow their claw situation. They can still <laughs> they go from having regular nails to having fake acrylic nails instantly, okay, and yeah, then that's no... how they get claws. And he just poked him in the head. I did notice that that the sometimes they had like sharp claws, but it wasn't yeah like you said it wasn't claws. It was like nails, like long. Nails. Yeah. So weird. Did you have a favorite song? <laughs> 
<laughs> like, okay, all that shit aside about how horrendously tr- traumatic all that was, did you actually have a favorite song? Because I know you kept leaning over and be like, my boyfriend loves this song. You know, yeah. Like, I, like, he knows the song. We're all sitting there just, like, deer in headlights. Like, what's happening? He, yeah, he was, well, and he says, too, that, like, the music was pretty on point. Like, ever, like, most of the music in there was exactly, like, what was in the play. But it took place in different areas or somebody different sang it. Like, Taylor Swift's part is usually sang by... First of all, the main female cat is usually a guy. And then he sings about... or and then the, Wait, the, in the play it's a guy? Yeah. Why? Oh, Victoria's not the main character? No, no, no. Victoria's the main character. I'm saying um, the one who chooses the Jell- Jellica cat to be reincarnated. Oh, the the, the Judy Dench cat yes. is, a, is usually a dude in the play? Yeah. So, like, like, weird stuff like that. The whole tap dance, like... Well, when Judy Dench calls you and says, I want to be in fucking Cats, you fucking <laughs> I'm drop... I'm a cat <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> drop everything. I know, I was just thinking of uh, Always Sunny, where uh, uh, Dennis's, like, uh, ex-wife, Ponderosa, she starts, like, <laughs> using his alimony to, like, become a cat. Like, she gets, like, cat... Like, uh, like her eyes get done, her teeth get done, or whatever. Yeah. That's how I felt like this, like, they just wanted to be cat people. And it was so weird. And then there's a lot of commentary, too, about, like, like the furry aspect of this, I you can't deny the sexualness. The main yes. cat was pretty hot. I'm just wondering. Victoria like, was sleek. Yes, they <laughs> That's did a good, a good word job for it. Sleek. On her. Which is another reason why I kind they of made wish her they were just face, people. They made her face really pretty. They made they put a lot of work on her. There were some cats that definitely got a little bit more work. Like there was that other, there was that second cat who kind of like. He was like, I don't know who he was. It was the guy cat that, like... I, I was just thinking about him and how uncomfortable he made me. He was the most uncomfortable one. He his was head very was... sexual and flamboyant and just, like, he was the he was the first thing you laugh at in the movie because they're like, okay, throw her out of the bag. And she steps out of the bag. And somehow you're still in this movie. You're still, like... And this is the first two minutes. You're like, what, what am I going to see? Where is this going to go? And then he slinks yeah. over. Yeah. And you're like, oh, no. Yeah, he... <laughs> That's how this is going to be. He felt like some kind of, like, uh, Spanish, like, uh, like a uh, tourist who's, like, trying to put the sex moves on someone. Yeah. Like a Pepe Le Pew, like, like over-sexualized, like... Like, hey. I wasn't sure if he was trying to bang Victoria or trying to bang the old bitch. But then they were yelling at, he was yelling at everybody too. So I don't know. But yeah, he was weird. And uh, like, like we were saying, the main cat, Victoria, she was very like sleek and very, you know, sexy kind of style, like very athletic, you know, like very mm-hmm. like slim, which again, like I was saying, like, which kind of kills it with all the CG because you can't even appreciate these act like these performers' bodies. And I know that sounds really sexual, but I mean like if I can't appreciate a body, <laughs> why am I gonna watch a movie? No, but I'm not saying because the the main character is a woman and she has to be hot. But I'm just saying like you know when you watch a performance like that, they're wearing tight stuff because it's very like you know it's a very athletic thing. You know, yeah. it's like when you watch like gymnastics and stuff. So. To just CG this cat suit over everybody, it like kills any of the work they do. So when they do like a split or like a a leg raise, which there's a lot of that in the movie where people just raise mm-hmm. their leg. I started doing it. Well, I have back problems, so like I was trying. Oh, to, yeah, I, saw. I was trying to stretch my leg, but I just kept I kept like raising my leg like I was one of the cats during the movie, and I, I feel so bad for that couple <laughs> next episodes. <laughs> they you, chose those seats. They fucking know what they're getting into. You don't pick. You see, there's only four seats in the theater. You don't pick the two seats right next to it. Do you think they were like, "Ooh, fellow cat fans"? <laughs> That's how I felt. We walked in. I'm like, I'm like, I thought it was, I'm being cynical. So I'm like, oh, fellow people who want to talk shit about this movie. But yeah, you know, what I'm saying is like, these the athleticism of the actors can't be appreciated because you can't see them do it. You know, you just see this CG cat cartoon over them. So when she's doing all her moves, it's like, eh, like anybody could be doing those moves. In fact, I, for all I know, in the CG computer, they just take the little keyframe, keyframe. They call it keyframe animating when you mm. move every individual part, you know, because they'll do like, uh, they'll do motion cap to do like all the the bigger movements, but then they'll use uh, keyframing to like move like little things. But like, for all I know, they just move the leg higher. Like I don't know if that's her being athletic or that's just the people in the computer department exaggerating it. like when a tap dancer starts tapping yeah i'm like are they sp- i don't know if they're speeding that up or they're making or they're adding more frames to make it look more impressive or that guy is just really good at tap dancing like i don't know like i don't know i can't we'll appreciate never know. yeah i will never know i can't appreciate anybody's performances cuz they're all fucking cartoons yeah weird weird hellish bosch <laughs> style cartoons 
I feel like, too, like, part of the problem with that movie is, like, there's that rule where if something isn't human but looks too human, uh, it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, it's called Uncanny Valley. It's, like, the idea that if something is cartoony, you would, um, you don't care. Like, uh, like, like, perfect example, like, Wally, right? Like, Wally doesn't look like a human, but he has eyes, you know, the, the, the white robot, Evie, the, like, the feminine style robot was, like, you know, like, she had a little, like, laser LED face, and, like, you you project your human you project human qualities on them if they have just enough human qualities like a big eyes or head or or whatever but then the valley starts to get deep when you start getting closer to looking like a human because sometimes you get so close to looking like a human that it actually makes it really unpleasant to watch and this movie was all of that because yeah. they didn't look like cats and they were weird people some kind of island of dr monroe shit like where i'm just like i don't this is not right to the point where the theory is that the reason why that's like that is because naturally you would detect sickness in someone. Like, if you met someone, like, you know, like, 10,000 years ago, and they looked off, like, you know, like, something was really weird about their face, you'd be like, I don't know, this something is genetically not okay with this person, I don't want to breed with them, or maybe they're sick. And it carries all the way into, like, computer graphics. So you got movies like Polar Express, you know, or, like, any of some of those, like... Um, or with Shrek, they actually, the first time they made Fiona, she was way too realistic looking. And they were like, we need to really pull it back. And yeah. Her. So you got to, yeah, exactly. So like if it's, if it's cartoony enough or animalistic, like, uh, like one of the previews was the great wild on the, on the, when we were watching cats with uh, Harrison Ford. Oh my God. And Oof. the dog. And I leaned over to you. I'm like, that's the next one. I'm like prepared. Cause I saw the trailer when I went to go see Star Wars. So I was like, I leaned over to you and I was like, be prepared for a really uncomfortable looking computer graphic dog and that's how it was where it's like you know the dog fell into the uncanny valley where yeah it looks kind of like a dog but then when they do all the like facial expressions and the movements like it doesn't look like a dog and, that, and that separates you so far then if you just watched a cartoon like a disney movie and it was just close enough like a dog like it was the same problem with the the lion king remake where it's like mm -hmm. no one has any facial expressions in the movie so like they look good but they didn't want to do the like too much facial movement because cats can't really do that much, like, you know, like, uh, they're not, like, they don't have, like, eyebrow movement and stuff, like, tigers and lions and stuff. So they try to keep it realistic to make it look like a documentary. But then, meanwhile, Simba's crying over his dead dad, and, like, he, his face is just, like, totally still, like, no. And you're just, like, <laughs> that's weird. Like, you know, like, it works in a cartoon because that exaggeration is built in. And then you're watching this, and you're seeing human faces just covered in weird hair and then like their heads are weird too so it almost seemed like they had like a bald cap on with like ears because their yeah. heads were raised so they could have like the cat ears which sometimes look kind of neat because like they would move like cat ears like or they got yeah. scared or whatever but uh yeah it was I, uh it was a bit much i think i just figured out the demographic um oh yeah because we were trying to figure this out because we're waiting for the movie to start and like there's 20 trailers right because every movie has to have a half hour of uh you know opening trailers and it's all over the place, but it's, like, mostly, like, there's, like, a Trolls movie, and then there's, like, the Into the Wild, the CG Dog, and then there's, uh, like, there's just, like, like kid movies and so animated. What I what I just connected is um, three of the, of the trailers that stand out to me are um, Peter Rabbit 2. Oh, God, yeah, that was the first one. <laughs> the Runaway wife, or something. My wife's like, there's a fucking Peter <laughs> Rabbit movie, and we're like, not only that, this is the sequel. Uh, that rascal's getting into trouble again. <laughs> I don't think he's going to stay out of trouble. Well, we'll be back with that review, too. <laughs> um, so, Peter Rabbit 2, uh, in Call, Call of the Wild? Yeah, Call of the Wild. And, um... There was that Trolls movie? Dr. Doolittle. Oh, and I Dr. realize Doolittle. now that with based on those three movies that the demographic was people who, um, don't pick up on bad animal CG. <laughs> People who uh, have some kind of, like, learning disability that makes them unable to pick up on, like, normal facial cues. So they, yeah. they're like, fine. I'm fine with this. They're like, like wow, it looks really good. Yeah, cats it, looks really good. We should go see it. And then it's like, if you are actually able to sit through Cats, you're going to love Call of the Wild. <laughs> cats is... It's the kind of movie, like, I feel like you'd have to be drunk with a group of people. But then I'm thinking, like, that wouldn't even work because a drunk... You know, you, a, a bunch of people hanging out drinking are going to want to watch a movie that's consistently singing, you know? Like, there's fun singing movies. There's, a, what was that, Repo Man? Oh, so good. The Rock Opera. Repo which is, the Genetic Opera. Yeah, which is an amazing oh, fucking so movie. Good. I got to watch that again. And there's parts where they talk in it, too. Yeah, there's, 
every <laughs> fucking musical has parts where they just stop and talk. This was like being like waterboarded. I imagine what waterboarding is like, where you're just I just want to breathe. Version of waterboarding. I just want to breathe. I think I said to you during the movie, I was like, I, "Is this what depression's like?" Like, you know, I'm not better than anybody, but I can't say I've really suffered from depression. Uh, but you know, you hear it described like, you know, there's no way out, and a feeling of like, <laughs> just like, uh, like uh, uselessness and like not wanting to leave, yeah. helplessness. Yeah. And I was watching this, and because I, I checked my watch 20 minutes, and I'm like, fuck. This is an hour and 58 minute movie and I can't leave because I'm committed to this and I have, we're going to do a review of it. So I have to fucking watch it <laughs> and which was a unique experience for me because I never usually want to walk out of a movie, even bad movies. I'm like, well, I'll just watch it till the end. But this was like, fuck. Because when you get, when you realize that they're just going to sing from beginning to end. In fact, we were joking that they weren't even going to change songs because the first song is like 15 minutes. So you're just like, is this is it just one song for the whole movie? Like, are they just gonna sing all the way till the end of the movie? Kind of, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Um, I'm wondering if this will like draw, really truly draw like a furry demographic, or if it's too bad for that. Because I'm like, it wasn't. I mean, everyone's I like, oh, Furries. it's so sexual, but it's like, I don't know if it was that sexual. I don't know, Zootopia did so. That's true. <laughs> Zootopia, like, like after Zootopia came out, everything I would see on the internet would joke about. Um, the two characters, like the fox and the bunny, like having some kind of relationship. And I'm like, dude, never had a relationship in the movie. Like, people were projecting that so hard. Uh, was it was uh, like, God, I don't remember their characters' names. But, like, you know, there's a scene at the end where, like, the fox is like, you know you love me. And she's like, do I? Do I love you? And then that's it. Like, you know, they're just partners. And then, but every comic I read was, like, about them fucking. And God forbid you're on Pornhub or something. And then you're browsing around. Which, if you ever go on a porn website, it's basically the equivalent of, like, walking through a downtown Compton trying to find drugs. And you're just hoping you would <laughs> run down the wrong aisle or the wrong, uh, into the wrong neighborhood. And so you're just walking around. And so next thing you know, there's just an ad where, like, Zootopia characters are fucking. And you're just like, oh, God, I don't want to see oh this. Oh, my God. If you get a cat's ad, please screenshot it for me. Forget cats, <laughs> dude. I could probably find it. T- I could probably find it while we're recording. Because <laughs> there's everything. Like, I... You, you see, like, a like family guy, dude, everything. And, and different versions, like CG. I've seen them do some stuff where they, like, cut it into actual footage. So, like, it'll be, like, Lois and Peter talking, a family guy, and they're, they're having an argument. And then they'll cut in the animation of the sex. So, oh, my God. So you get, like, the story, and you get, like, you know, it's cheaper. It's like the way they did Power Rangers, where you just Thank take God, footage I've... that already exists and then interject footage. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to masturbate to Family Guy for so many years, so... Yeah, yeah. It's um uh, from personal experience, not a road you want to go down. But all right, let's um I wanna start wrapping this up. But I wanna talk about the scene okay, there's two scenes at the end that kind of just break the movie. So for a movie that's already pretty insane and hard to follow, uh well first I wanna talk about the climax uh like the climax of the character. They the 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 characters are all arguing over who's going to get the second, uh, like, win or second life or whatever the fuck they're going to get from the Judy Dench character. They're going to win the Jellicle bash or whatever. And there's that cat that keeps getting kicked out everyone hates because, I don't know, if she had something to do with the bad guy, maybe. It wasn't clear because I couldn't understand anything she was singing about. Yeah. She's an amazing singer, but I couldn't understand it. Uh, but then the main cat, Victoria, who, you know, like one of these, uh, what do they call like, white savior syndrome or whatever where like a white person's always saving oh, a yeah. black person so you got like or like anybody like like tom cruise in the last samurai like tom cruise the white man will save the samurai like that kind of thing so mm-hmm. they do that so the white cat uh the girl cat who's like uh naive and because she's naive she has an open eye on the world and sees through the bullshit everyone else is mean to this cat so she goes out and, white feminism saves us again yeah white feminism saves uh the poor black poor poor like like they keep talking about how bad her coat is which is crazy because a lot of people don't even wear coats but her coat is way bigger than everybody else's she brings her in and she basically like here you sing your song to judy dench and she does and i didn't understand a word of it but i guess she's sad and wants another try at life and judy dench is moved i think she was moved already that victoria cared like that she was like kind of going against the grain like everyone else was just being a tool bag and be like fuck that bitch but then she was like, no, nah, give this chick a chance. Your life sucks. She needs a second chance more than anybody. So you could tell I paid attention a little bit. Like, I tried to, I gathered some some information. So she wins, right? She wins the fucking movie. And so I'm just curious on what winning is. Like, what happens to this person? Like, what's it look like to have your life reborn in this world of the cat people? 
Well, they answer that for you because it looks like you get into a hot air balloon <laughs> and fly away until you disappear. Disappear. Yeah, that's it. Probably die. I, I was Lack assuming the whole time that they were just going to get picked up or brought to a vet and get put down. And, like, that was, like, the <laughs> fucking, like, like some soiling green shit or the island with Scarlett Johansson where you're, like, you just find out that, oh, actually, they just kill you. Like, Logan's wrong. They just kill you. And, uh, but I, was, I wasn't really wrong because they just put her in, a like, a balloon and shove her off into the sky. They don't even explain, like... What they get resurrected into, like, do you get to be a human? Is it only just another cat? Like, it so seemed, is there, so like, after you die in this world, there's nothing unless you are chosen. It was just blackness. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like the island. Uh, I gather that it just means you get sent to a different country. Yeah. Like Ireland. The movie takes place in London, I guess. So they send you to, I don't know, Scotland? Yeah. Fucking where? Finland? Sweden? Where do they send them? Where, where does the blimp go? And how come they only, it just takes, maybe it takes a year for her to build the blimp, so, or the, the balloon, the hot air balloon. Yeah, that's why. Can't afford nah, so you that much gas. Do it once a year, so. So they take the poor cat, and they put her in a fucking balloon, which is funny, because the movie opens with a woman throwing the cat in, like, a, I don't even know what it was, like a pillowcase. Yeah. And that starts the whole movie. And then it ends with them putting a cat on a balloon and shoving it into the sky, which is funny, because the evil cat tries to grab onto it. Mm-hmm. He grabs onto, like, the string, like, I'm gonna go, too, and then he slips off. Oof. And I thought they were going to show a scene where he hits the ground, but he just falls like four feet because there's a statue underneath him. Yeah, like... you got freaked out. You're like, oh my God. Oh, okay. He like, gets caught by the statue <laughs> and doesn't die horribly. Oh, I thought he was going to fucking hit the ground. No, he falls like three feet, but he lands on a statue, like the hat of a statue. But then his magic's gone, which they don't explain at all. Remember, he tries to like, he tries to snap his fingers to like teleport out like yeah. he's been doing, doing that right night crawler shit. And he doesn't go anywhere. And then he's like, damn it. And he's like stuck on the statue. So I'm like, oh, he'll just die like that. <laughs> <laughs> this man starved to death. <laughs> oh, man. yeah. Like he's just going to starve to death up there. But you know what scene I'm talking about right after that. Yes, of course. <laughs> the, the scene that fucks the whole movie. Just like, like what? It, it, okay. It was like when the Matrix 3 was coming out and there was a rumor that maybe the Matrix would just end by them saying, you're in the Matrix. This movie is trying to explain to you that you're in the Matrix. Wake up like like some self-meta shit. Like, oh, I'm the Matrix. They kind of do that with this movie, with the fucking end of this. Well, what I found out, so at the end of the movie, the main, I keep forgetting this old woman. This just old say Judy name. Dench. Yeah, That's Judy Dench turns after, after, um... Jupiter or some shit. After, uh, Jennifer Hudson gets flown away to her death uh judy deuteronomy. dench deuteronomy deuteronomy turns to the audience to and you. breaks the fourth wall which like this movie isn't terrible enough they're like and we're gonna break all the rules she deadpools that shit she looks right at us and, and starts s- explaining shit to us like cat- cats are not dogs and <laughs> cats don't like to be touched and all these terrible things about but- cats she does it, like, three times, though. Like, she says something, and then they, like, go back to, like, looking at the sky or dancing or whatever, and then she goes back to talking to you, like, oh, shit, there's a third part. Like, <laughs> And what I found out, too, is that is not dogs. in the play. I hope fucking not. Well, I thought it would be because, like, oh, like, you know how sometimes in plays they'll break the fourth wall, they'll, like, talk to the audience and sing to the audience. Yeah, so like, like when we saw Beetlejuice, that. like, it yeah. starts off like that. Yeah. So I asked, like, Justin, I was like, yo, is, is this in the play? He's like, no, not at all. Like, it ends with <laughs> her happening? flying away. To die. Yeah. But, yeah, she just starts talking to you. And then I'm laughing too hard to even understand anything she's saying. But she's basically like... You gotta be, like, you gotta use your cat's real name. And that was another weird thing in the beginning of the movie. They, they, I didn't understand. It was like, they explained to the main cat. They're like, what's your name? And she's like, Victoria. And then they're like, oh, you crazy bitch. Cats have three names. And then it was like, you got, like, your sh- cat name that someone gives you. And then you got, like, a street cat name. And then you have, like, a super secret personal name. Which I didn't understand what it had to do with fucking anything in the movie. But then at the end, yeah, Judy Dench is like, Deuteronomy's like, you know, you gotta use your cat's real name and figure it out. But cats aren't dogs and i'm just like yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty <laughs> clear on that i was pretty clear i figured i've nailed that information you mentioned down. that in the movie when they try to avoid the dog yeah you don't get to see the dog yeah i was so mad about that but yeah there's like i know cats aren't dogs and then they're like you gotta let the cat come to you you gotta put some caviar out i'm like what caviar <laughs> and then when they say that all the cats around her she's like three the three main cats around her they start making all these like hungry faces oh, yeah, like, licking their lips like, oh, 
caviar. Yeah, caviar. And they're all like really close, which is funny because when you see this thing like this, like in normal movies, like you're, it's like a fun little game to play. Like you got the main character acting her act, their like acting her ass off. And then you kind of like zone in on someone else in the background to see like what they're doing. I do it a lot during Broadway plays because it's always yeah. crazy how like they keep in character. And I was kind of doing that too, where Judy Dench is fucking talking to me, which is crazy and uh, I'm losing my mind. Like I feel like I'm losing my shit. Like <laughs> oh my god, this is what schizophrenia is like. Where like someone's talking to me now, but they're just yeah, they're just like face fucking her, like eye fucking her. They're just like looking at her and just like yeah, yeah, yeah oh caviar, oh. And they're just like <laughs> what is happening? And then she just gives her a little like. Words of wisdom, and then fucking, I don't know. Then the movie ended. And then I immediately jumped up, because I did not want to be in the theater anymore. <laughs> so I was like, get the fuck out of here. I gotta be up. It's Christmas morning tomorrow. I gotta be somewhere at 9 o'clock in the morning. And this fucking, and this chick's explaining to me, cats aren't dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and more things you already knew in the world. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was, it was weird. It was I just, a- I wish that I could see the original version because what's really upsetting me is just the fact that they cleaned up the cg of the version we saw that uh, you know uh yeah a day or there two was such a reaction to the first trailer from all the critics like yeah. a day or two after it came out that oh, they that's right. that's, yeah. secretly were like here they sent out to theaters here's the version you will play now like it's been edited so, so they tried to clean up all the background CG. while it was in theaters they updated it yeah which has only been like what a couple weeks yeah yeah it hasn't even been out that long and so already, it's already had a revamp, a slight revamp or change. But then I heard it was something like they only really updated like the main cats or something like that. So like a lot of the background cats mm. still kind of look like shit. I heard that somewhere. I wasn't. It all looked thought... like shit. So I wasn't sure what was supposed to look better than that. Like yeah. like the main cat looked really good. Victoria, like she was very like good looking. Judy Dench was like pretty good. Like the fur, like there was some really good rendering from like an artistic standpoint. There was some like. For what that was, it was done pretty good, you mm-hmm. know, pretty well. But the fact that they were doing it all is not good. Not good at all. I just wish that I could see the original version before, like, the the trailer came out. Like, just the worst CG version of it. The, <laughs> like the unedited. First Sonic, like the first Sonic trailer? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> this movie, uh, I heard it so, someone describe it like this is the kind of movie um, that you would take, like, your kid to go see. Like, it's cats. It's PG, whatever. And you would look back on this movie, like, when you grow older, not with nostalgia, but with, like, some kind of hidden fear, like a, like a, like a repressed memory, like, oh, what was that? What was that weird thing? It's like, uh, did you ever see The Return of Oz? The Return to Oz? Like, the, it was the sequel to Wizard of Oz that came out a little while later. You know, Wizard of Oz, the movie. Yeah. yeah. There was a sequel to it a little while later called The Return of Oz, and it's way scarier than the original one. I remember this, like, creepy show that came out when i was a kid that was kind of like a fever dream where it was live action and they oh, had Zoe like smoking caterpillar was it i don't know i don't know smoking caterpillar that's alice in wonderland oh no maybe i don't know there fever a dreams of... yes. yes it'll be like that childhood like, fever dreams you'll try to remember that when you're older and be like what is that what is, what am i remembering like mom what what happened to me when I was a kid? I've never seen Return to Oz, though. Yeah, but it's that same kind of thing. Like, it's so much creepier and weirder than the original. So, people that see it, like, you like, wait, I just remember, like, there's, a there's like, a jack-o'-lantern dude, like, a pumpkin head dude, and, like, it just, it's totally bizarre. But it's, it's kind of like this, where there's no way, let's put it this way, I want to meet someone who likes this movie. <laughs> like, I have to find somebody who watched this movie and was like, that was awesome. If you like this movie, please contact us. Please. Message, email, something. Tell us why. Tell me. Explain to me why you like this movie. You know, because I'm not saying this movie is the worst and should be, like, you know, tossed out. I've seen some movies that are actually bad. This movie was just more of, like, why I can't... The, the undertaking was insane. Like, the fact that they thought they could do something like this was just, like, some absurd shit. And it's, a. Uh, and that it just passed so many levels where it could have been stopped. It should have been stopped. Yeah. It shouldn't have gotten that far. It's like like a bad like political program or something that, you know, because there's so many people involved. I guess that's what it is, like, in movies. There's so many people. There's so many producers. Like, I remember they showed there was, like, six producers. And I remember thinking, like, damn, they all lost money. And then that director, we were laughing, like, he's never going to work again. <laughs> They're like, the writer, like, fired. Blacklisted, fired. <laughs> Blacklisted, Done. Fired. Yeah. And then it's funny because they go through all those names and then they show the word cats, like the logo from the play. Like I feel like it had to be that, like, so, you know, obviously like, when you do, like, CG stuff like this, you're like, okay, like, they, they filmed all the actors and they're like, 
oh, this isn't good. But we have to get some money for this. Gotta finish it. Yeah. yeah. We gotta get something, get anything. Even in. if it's $6.5 million, we'll spend the 96, 95 million. See, it's funny, because there's movies, like, uh, there was a Supergirl movie. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You mm-hmm. love this movie. Because <laughs> <it's a> fu- <laughs> they ran out of money while they were making it. So they couldn't afford to do the final sequence. So in the movie, they just said it was invisible, the creature. <laughs> like, like the the villain is supposed to be this monster. And they're like, it's invisible. And she's like, no. And she's just shooting lasers at nothing. And then she defeats it. And oh then you're God. like, there's nothing. Like, they couldn't even afford to finish the fucking film. And it's like, and that movie wasn't like, you know, it's watchable. This movie was just crazy. <laughs> this was just a crazy thing to do. I'm glad we watched it, though. It's a good way to spend Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Good way to start Christmas. I'm happy. Keeps us friends together. <laughs> Keeps us uh, close. Spend time with family. Yeah. You know, we're, we're basically family, and it was good to spend that watching. You know, it was, Just to see the lights, the twinkle in your boyfriend's eyes, <laughs> to finally see something he saw as a kid, and then to see it on the big screen yeah. with big name actors like Ian McKellen, you know, just killing it up there. <laughs> looking like he like, actually when he first saw the trailer he's like would you go see this with me and i was like maybe like i was i've not... done that to my wife she's done that to me with certain movies where you see something and like you know no one else wants to go see it but you're like hey do you want to go see this movie <laughs> as a personal favor and you're like uh yeah i'll go yeah. see that i did that to my uh it was a movie where like kate upton and uh alexandria daddario where i was like i knew it was gonna be good but i was like i gotta see this movie mm-hmm. i love both these people but yeah it was a weird one if yeah. you had to rate it, I don't have a good rating. I don't have an established rating system here. One paw out of five. One paw out of five. <laughs> so that's like a twenty-five out of a hundred. That's like a, yeah. I mean, like you said, like like the actors did their did their best, and there was a couple times where the CG looked good. So I can't be like it's the worst, but there man, was, it shouldn't yeah. have happened. I, the CG was good in certain aspects, but like a crazy fevered thing and the yeah. rest of it because when you know my, my wife was saying this to me in the car she's like you know the problem is you got these classical trained actors and they're being you know they're recording on probably green screens and all this stuff so it's hard to act on that you know probably a lot to do it and i was like well you know ian mckellen was in x-men and lord mm-hmm. of the rings so you shouldn't be a stranger to it judy dench i don't really know but but I think what it was is because there were so many things going on, like they'd have like the mice peep baby people and then there was the cats and then there was the actors with the cat suits and then there was the backgrounds and there were so many times where none of the elements, just nothing lined up. Like, yeah. you know, there was just like not like their eyes weren't looking at the right thing. Their body wasn't looking at the right thing. Like nothing lined up and it just looked wacky. It was like some fucking adult swim shit. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a three out of ten. Three meows out of ten, uh, <laughs> ten cat dinners. What's that clinky with the cat? They put they put the food in the crystal cup. Oh, um. Damn it! You should know. Fancy feast. Fancy feast. Yeah, I give this three <laughs> fancy feasts out of ten because uh, it could have worked, but it should never have even been tried. And my favorite song was the Mr. Mistopheles song. Yeah, that that's one, just a fun name. I like the the tap dancing song, the the the, the tap dancing shoe guy. Was it Scrabble? Dude, I don't Scrabble's. fucking know what their names are. Which is crazy because in a movie of flamboyant cat people, he was way more flamboyant. Like when he popped in the <laughs> set, I thought like Freddie Mercury showed up. I was like, what is that? Yeah. Because he does like a little like very heroic thing mm-hmm. where he kind of comes in and jumps down. And then, yeah, and then because everything was CG, anything they interacted with didn't work. Or, like, if they jumped on something, there was no weight to it. It was like, oh, my God. It was crazy. You can go on forever with this movie. Yeah. This is like, they're going to teach classes about <laughs> what not to do with this film. It'll be remembered. And because it's so bad, it'll kind of get infamy, like, uh, like, Birdemic or some shit. But even, like, Birdemic is like... I feel like it's, like, our current The Room. Because the difference is, like, Birdemic is purposely a bad movie. If it wasn't just... sung, like, if it was just a movie, mm-hmm. it probably would reach the room status because then you could just watch it. But the problem with yeah. the singing is that you just, you can't understand anything they're fucking mm-hmm. doing. So it makes it incomprehensible. Whereas, like, Tommy Wiseau seems... <laughs> yeah, it makes Tommy Wiseau, like, make sense and, like, come across clearly with his Articulated concepts. Articulated compared <laughs> yes. to this shit. Tired of this world. <laughs> Love is blind, Brian. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, guys. So, thanks, Brian, for coming with me and yeah, going of to see it. Uh, t- we went out, and uh, thanks for coming doing the podcast with me. 
Uh, this is Dan, your host, and uh, thank you guys for joining us for the movie review of Cats. All right, everyone, I'll see you guys next week. Have a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you around the new year. Bye. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should.